I love my beat, man. My opening intro beat is banging. Shout out to my boy Silent J for making that beat, y'all. Boom, I hear it in my sleep sometime, man. I want to give a shout out to the people out there, man, for coming up to me and saying they love the show, man. And a lot of times y'all say, we love the Panic Room. Boy, you better put Pierre's name on it. It's Pierre's Panic Room. It's three names, homie, all right? But no, I appreciate y'all for showing me the love, man. My guests are coming on. They strong, man. Today we got a strong guest again. I'm excited about having him. But before I start, you know what I got to do? I got to read the comments that my crew gets me. I don't pick them. I just, have, I just read them. All right, let's go with this one. This is from the George Wallace Show. Shout out to George Wallace, man. He's crazy as all out there. We did two shows, man. So this is Tish CO305 says, he can't get no food endorsement because he ain't got no more taste in his mouth. Damn, George Wallace is a fool. That was a funny line he said about slapping Chris Rock. That, that was funny. All right, from the TK Kirkland Show. Shout out to my boy TK. Who is the real chef TV says? Dope interview. Salute to these two legends. Oh, good looking out, man. I appreciate it. Who is the real Chef TV? Yes, I appreciate it, man. All right, this is oh, another one from the George Wallace Show. Chris Martinez says, Pierre yelling, oh, come on, man. After every comment made this even funnier. LOL, man. Shout out, man, again, for George Wallace. Thank you all for supporting him. This next gentleman I got on the show, I'm excited, man. Took a while to get this brother, man. He's always busy working, but I got him, y'all. I got him. He's legendary. He's kind of infamous also. So we all want to know what he's been up to. A lot of people have seen, haven't seen him in a while. They want to know what he's doing. I got him to come sit down here on Pierre's Panic Room, man. I'm excited about having him. You know him. He's legendary. Give it up for the one and only Mr. Teddy Carpenter. Teddy, Teddy. Give it up, y'all. Clap, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, Teddy. Teddy, homie. I appreciate it, bro. Come on, have a seat, man. You in, the Pierre, you in Pierre's Panic Room right now, brother. Shoes through this whole uh, space. Okay, there. I figured I got the new Bruce, shoes. Said Bruce Bruce got through. Yeah, yeah he made through it. Yeah, he made <laughs> he through. But yeah, barely, but he made it through. Okay. I gotta yeah. get these 13s through there. Bro. I know that's right. Man, thank you for doing my show. Thank Teddy. you, man. For real, thank you man. For having for, me, man. For, I for appreciate real, it. My for man, real. My man. Um, you know, you 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 legendary. You really legendary, man. There, well, they, there, I, I don't know where that comes from. No, what you did on Def Jam, you were the only dude I know got Def got a stand ovation each time you did Def Jam. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I hear that, and and it's, and that's the one good thing that has stuck. With but me, right. To be honest with you, I'm like, okay, if that's what y'all want to keep rolling with, because right. you know, I, I I'm cool with it, but. Legendary don't always pay that mortgage. Okay, okay, that's true. <laughs> you know no, what I'm saying? True that, true that, so, true that. so, so, sometimes you're only as good as what you've done lately. Recently, right? Recently. And and don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. Frank, Frankie Beverly and right, right. a lot of those guys right, on the no side, new that, no, no new hits, and 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 people love them to death, and they come to see them and. So I appreciate it. And you I might be the Frankie the, Beverly of comedy. I didn't even think about that. You know what? Teddy Carpenter is the Frankie I Beverly of comedy. I actually wouldn't mind. I actually wouldn't Got mind. Got the hits. Maybe I heard from you recently, but I'm, I'm always wearing, jamming. I'm wearing white. Because, yeah, you know, Frankie right always got on white. white. And that boy, you got no baseball cap on. So, what, what, what about, <laughs> you know, so, so let's bring it back, man. We gonna, yeah. I want to I delve into, um, I, I learned some new things about you, too, man. Uh -oh. I've known you for years, man. We started off in the game back, you know, I started in the mid-'80s. You might start right after no, that a little no. bit. So uh, we did that. We, um, we, was, we was around the same time. Okay, I think same we time? Walked, walked in there. I got, I got like, 30 I got like thirty seven years. Years in. on to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. So um, let me ask you, what? For, for, I remember, for some reason, I remember you from Virginia. Did you? Did you live in Virginia for yeah, a while? Yeah, I, li I lived. I was born in D.C. Okay, born in D.C. And I lived in uh, Falls Church, Virginia. What's up? Forty three. Falls Church. That's a lot of white folks in Falls Church, man. No, but Falls Church had an area that was predominantly all black. Oh, okay. See, James cool. Lee, James Lee, and around the James Lee area was one area where James Lee was a black man who donated all this land. And they had one of the oh, first man. black, one of the first black elementary schools. So if you lived in Virginia back in the day, you had to go to Hoffman, Boston. You had to go to it was another school, uh -huh. or you had to go to Spingarn, one of the older schools in D.C. Okay. So that's where they shipped you at. Okay. Okay. So okay. that's where my my mother went to Hoffman, Boston. My father went to Luther Jackson. Okay. And okay. but originally the family was from out of the city. But let me ask you. Okay, you were born in D.C. How yeah. long did you stay in D.C. before you went to Virginia? That, not long. 
So just a couple like, of years. He, he, just like a couple, couple of years. A couple of years. And then yeah. he went to Virginia. Then I moved to Virginia. Okay. Went through high school. Then In Virginia. Did you go to TC? T, T, no, T? I went to Falls Church High School. Then I went to, I, I did move with some rich white folks. Okay. okay. Rest in Virginia. Okay, okay now. Don't, yeah, which, all over which, there. Which, yeah. which <laughs> it wasn't so much that it was rich. It was just a diversity area where everybody seemed to be well off. Now, I thought we was doing well. Right. Because, now dig this. We had a washing and dryer. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, go to the laundry Balling. Okay. okay. Balling. Well, well. Bruh, I, I promise you, I laid my clothes out. I was like, I'm going to wear this, and then I'm going right. to wear it again. Next right. time I'm going to wash it, and then right. I'm going to wear it again. Right. And, then, and the first time I went to school, I met I met a, a, a white dude named Casey Veach. In fact, my son, one of my sons is named Casey. I named him after Casey right. Veach, right? Okay. Coolest white dude you ever want to meet. Coolest white dude, right? Think nothing of it, played on the basketball team. I had played against him, you know, you know, 11, 12 year old. He's like, hey, you know, got some friends, wanna come over to the house, you wanna come? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm new here, I'm oh. two or three days. Mm -hmm. Man, this dude, we live in an apartment building. Okay. This dude took me to his house and I, and I, all my children, his house was bigger than our whole apartment building and a half, they had a guest house, was right. bigger than everything we owned. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rich white folks. But you know what? You would have never known because he was just a regular dude. Cool. And I yeah. just thought that was the coolest thing ever to say, hey, I don't care who you are. Okay. You know, get down with us. T tell me about your family structure. Your sisters, brothers, mothers, father yeah, together. Yeah, How did yeah. that happen when you grew uh, up? How was it? You know, uh, brother, sister. Okay. You know, Older, younger? Older. Older, okay. I'm, I'm so the you, you the baby? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Youngest. All right. I ain't going to say the baby. Okay. Youngest. Okay. So, you know, um, you know, mother and father. In the you house? You know, one of those. Nah, you know how that okay. shit go. Okay. Well, well, no, you no, know. I'm about to find out. So, yeah. yeah. Father yeah. lived close. Good, right. good, good dude. <laughs> right. But never quite learned how to be a father himself. Okay. You know, okay. did the little things. You know, I, I try not to, I try not to dog him. He just turned 80 and I, you know, I try oh, not yeah, to really yeah. put him, God you know. Him. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but mother was strong. Right, you right. know, car that. carried the load. Right, right, did right. Did her thing, you know. Do, do, do you think? Um, so you grew up in, 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 because I remember on stage you talk about being southeast. So what did you have, did you go back to southeast, or you would just use that as a well, state? Well, well, two two things. I had okay. family that always lived in D.C. Okay. So right. so and, and I live in D.C. as we speak mm -hmm. uh, for actually the last ten years. Because mind you, I lived in a whole area. I was in Upper Marlboro for 15 years. The DMV area you're talking about? Yeah, but yeah. I, I still struggle to say the DMV. Why? I don't know, because, you know, <laughs> I think where you are, you are. Because when I was in Maryland, I was from Maryland. I'm, you know, that's where my house was. Okay. I'm in D.C. I'm in D.C. right now. Right, right. You know what I'm okay. saying? When I was in L.A., you well, know. Well, okay. I mean, I, you know, I, LA, I just. DMV? Yeah. <laughs> no. I, but, I, you know, I struggle to say the DMV because it's, it's, DMV is more novelty. Okay. It's really for a lot of people that haven't been in the area. Okay. But you won't a true a true DC dude will not say the DMV. Would a do, true Maryland person say DMV? I doubt it. And Virginia? Well, I doubt it. Virginia will. <laughs> because Virginia Virginia always needed an identity. Oh. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So so because I'm gonna keep it 100. Yeah. If you was if you was if you lived in if you was from DC, you was always considered soft. Really? Hell yeah. I was in D.C. I don't remember that. Yes. Yeah, so no, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you was, it was from Virginia. I apologize. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm if you were, if you were, if you was, if you was, terrible. Yeah, no. If you was from, if you was from Virginia, Virginia okay. you was considered soft. So right. what happened was when the drug trade was going on, a lot of the dudes from Virginia would come to the city to get their drugs. Right. And so you know you had you know so they had to be a little gangster because right. you just can't go there and just think you're gonna leave. Oh no, 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 no. Right. I feel, <laughs> not, I feel, not with the drugs. Right. Think you're gonna leave. Right, sure, sure. So, sure. you know, so Alexandria and certain right. places start developing a little reputation of, right. you know, you know, dudes wanting to prove themselves back then. So you, you know got your I, I would hate to say the word roughness more from being in DC when you went to visit your family and stuff, saying seeing the no, lower no, end of no, stuff. No, 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 no. There are pockets of Virginia that, you know, you had to you had to prove yourself. You okay. had to really? like and because and be, and because I didn't travel with a lot of people. See, you gotta remember. Back in them days, it was the A-Team and all of the oh, groups yeah, and whatever. Chronicles. And so Gangster Chronicles oh, yeah, and all that. So that. you go to the Go-Go uh -huh. and you with the wrong, Crew, yeah. you know, or you two or three, four deep. Ooh, you practice. Right, right, right. You right, practice. Right. You're going to get that ass right. waxed. Right. 
Like who who this dude right here? Yeah, right, sure. And next thing you know, you you stole. Yeah, you know, I was, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know it's funny. I went to the uh, the member of the Coliseum to do Gabriel, absolutely. And I, I was on, I was on the top top, top, top rafter one time. Yeah. And I just seen somebody yell, "Hey!" And it was a, it was yell, "A team or Gangster Chronicle." And they, yeah. I saw him stomp a dude out, and it was like 50 people just converged on one just, dude, just and they were tap dancing. And the breaks off. I was like, "Hell no!" 50 the, deep. The the cap center. Okay, yeah. You remember back the cap boogie? back to school boogie and Come all on, of them and whatever the case be. They would beat them dudes down the stairs, man. Oh, oh yeah, my God. Yeah, yeah. It, and you had, like, if they came through, right. stand there if you want to. I know that's right. Better part to see. You better get up out of there. Because it's, it's 75 to 1. And when I say 75, right. 75. Right. Not 64, right. not 53, <laughs> right. 75. 75. Right, I feel you. Yeah. I also realized, I found out that you was a great athlete. Pretty good athlete. Well, pretty good athlete. That's, what, good that's what they tell Football, me. Football, right? Yeah, yeah. Damn. I played I play basketball. I played baseball, basketball, and football. I was better in baseball than anything. But baseball, like a lot of black uh, athletes, you get tired. Like what, when yeah. I say tired, you don't want to stand out there in that sun. The game slows up. Okay. So the pitching, the pitching, and the way that the game is ran, and all it slows up, and you you out there in a hundred and five degrees heat, you know what? Right, right, sure. Nah, I need something faster pace. So basketball was my thing, but football was my natural. Right. Gift. How far did you so, go in, one, in those sports? I went to, uh, I, you know, when you go to college, you got to end up give you, you, you know, one. it's phenomenal if you can do all three. But for real, for real, by the time I got to college, Elizabeth City State University, um, I narrowed it down to just football. Football. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And yeah. is there a reason why you didn't continue after that? And football. football? Yeah. 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 Because even football, you get you get burnt out. Oh, wow. And 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 what was happening was I was a running back, but mm. when you get to college, you are now going up against three fifteen, mm. three forty. The linebacker back then, the linebackers was three forty. They not really? fa- oh for sure, Good for Lord. sure. That, I mean, I'm sorry, two forty. Two hours and and and, yeah. and 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 so what happens is if you don't have your full concentration and and they started trying to move me to wide receiver, which I could play also, mm-hmm. but you going across that middle. You know, you're going across that middle, or you coming back on a slant route, or whatever the case may be. You, you, you have to be you, full concentration. Right, so, right. I, I got there and I started getting burnt out and I started getting tired, and you know, it was like, you know what? It's time. Right, it's time to move on. I've been right. playing since I was six years old. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. Um, so, what was gonna what, 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 uh, what's that thing? We, I played when I was. Uh, you know the little league, the uh, like the police league. You know, like like boys club. What, oh, the what boys club. club. What club did you play? Yeah. I, I was in a four boys club. Basketball or football? A oh, football, no football. Fo- football. Football, football. You 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 know you just play weight classes. So in football, you go all the way until you get to. Right. So when I got to high school, I was on varsity. Right, right, right. Or, you know, yeah, right, and again, right. you you learn a lesson right. because seniors that weigh two ten getting ready to go to right. college, and you coming in at one sixty. Right. You know, whatever the case may be, you better you better have right. Some well, game. I was saying I'm a boys club because I didn't know if you had a little league because yeah. you were, but you were over. Boys there club in. was more basketball. Boys club is more basketball. Well, I'm talking about when they say boys club, that's the first thing most people oh, really? think of. Yeah, okay. yeah, I went to number, number four was boys club. I played number football. Four. Yeah, number four. Okay. That was like Southwest and stuff. Okay. But I but being in college, did you study? Did something? That, did you want to become something besides a football player? Did you have your mind? Nah. Right? Damn. You know you you know it, you know the, you know the route was to go to college. Right. And and figure out what you want to do because they, they tell you 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 need to know what you want to do and even in even in uh, in college I kind of knew I was going to do stand up really yeah okay well I, I kind of knew I was going to yeah. do stand up you know as as a young as a young brother you know like everybody else you you go to you listen to Richard Pryor Moms mm-hmm. Mabley uh, P- Pig Meat Malcolm mm-hmm. you listen mm-hmm. to all those things so I was at a real young age mm-hmm. I was listening to that stuff knew everything word for word nice. all the Dolomite stuff right, right. all the you know uh, way down in the jungle the badass right. line stepped on the sick to find monkey's right, foot the right, monkey right. said can't you right. see where you standing on my goddamn feet, feet. Right. and you know I knew every now mind you I'm young. Right. I'm going to school saying all this shit. You Damn. know, you, I can't tell you how many times I got suspended. But you know, you 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 learn that stuff at a young age, and and so I, you know, by the time I got to college, you know, communications. But for real, for real, I just hope I get through college. That mm-hmm. was that was more the you right, know right the sentiments. About. Yeah. Let me ask you because I started off at a place called the Comedy Cafe. Yes. Back in '85, yes. you know, Tony Woods is and Chris. Yes. Thomas, but, but there were a couple of comics who didn't really come through. Like Chris Thomas didn't really come through. Right. The white Aaron. 
I didn't really see you as much either at right. the comedy cafe and right. Crystals and Garvin's right. and so forth. Yeah. So where'd you start off doing comedy? I, like most I, of the places? I, I, I went. Mean, I went there. <laughs> yes. I know. I bet, <laughs> yes. Well, what was that dude named? I, that old I, dude was named. Remember the random my high bakes? The old dude. He's a host. Well, I don't remember him, oh. but I'm gonna tell you who who was there all 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 the time. Uh, DJ Cool. DJ Cool was playing at Ibex right. way back in the day. Catfish Mayfield. Catfish Mayfield. That he was, was a he dude. was a comic. Yeah, yeah, he was a comic. Yeah, he was a hoster. Yeah, he was yeah, hosted yeah, that yeah. night. Okay, but go ahead. So, but I, when I came through, he was never he was he wasn't the person that introduced me. Okay. I used to I used to do the clubs. You know, I I did Garvin's and all that, but I did the clubs. Um, what would happen is at two o'clock, all the liquor had to be brought off the stage. Okay. You know, you know, if you drink in whatever right. two o'clock. So what happens is at two at one forty five, they stop the music, turn on the lights, take all the liquor up so they won't lose their liquor license. Well, guess whose time was it to go on stage for 15 minutes before they started the party? So they was zip. All right. We got this next comedy coming. What's the dude's name? Oh, what hell no. All right. Uh, <laughs> this dude coming out here. They say he's funny. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Ted Cobb to get up. And you had to go on the circle. With everybody Morning. around you getting their liquor taken from them, they pissed already, right. and you had to perform. Right, right. And I that's mean, and that's where I actually learned my what, chops. What was, it, what was it? The Quonset Hut was like that. All of them. Come on. Those were those are those, 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 those are like the hood spots that we performed in when we didn't even do the white hood. clubs and stuff. That's where you came to. And I remember you used to rap mind you, them you couldn't just do comedy. You had to now basically verbally fight off Jones. any. That no, wanted no, to right. say anything yeah, to yeah. you. We call it joning, where we go, yeah. You're joning. Snapping back. So and, yeah. you 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 had to you had to learn how to do all of that, and you know whatever okay. the case may be. So by the time I did um, Garvin's and whatever, to me it was a country club, because th those people came to watch comedy versus where I was coming from. So they came to watch comedy. I did all of those clubs. You know, I was in and out. Um, back then, you had to do predominantly white clubs. Sure. You had to learn how to do mm -hmm. white clubs. Mm -hmm. You even had to dress the part mm -hmm. because if you dress like you came from, the let's hood, say right, the hood, right, sure. you wasn't getting hired. Yeah. So Funny, I just had, who I just had on said that? He said he had, I think it was Don D.C. Curry, said he had, well, that's why he started wearing suits and stuff because he started yeah. doing the white clubs first mm -hmm. and you had to look the part, you know, from the yep. white folks. Yeah, to look the part. Yeah, yeah that's, that's crazy. Now, I'll say this, you know, we get into this. Um, you know, we had the clique of us comedians. You weren't right. in that clique. You know, you were obviously never in the right. clique. You weren't in the clique, right? I was saying, never in the clique. But you also came when you came to do the places that we were in. A, uh -huh. You had a different air about yourself, above us. Not in a negative way. Mm -hmm. You just, I just felt like you knew you were a star, or you felt like you were a star compared to us on open mic night. Even when you were a young comic, you had that. The same thing Martin had. I remember Martin had an entourage with him on mm -hmm. open mic night. Um, we noticed that. Do you think that that air helped you move to where you are, or did it hinder you at times when people, because people would sit back and say, he think he better than us, or he bigger than us. And you wreck shop now, and then you walk away. You were never clickish. Did you think well, that you know, you know what, man? Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even say the word click. It was just more, um, you know, some of the one-on-one some of the, some of the, some of battles I had to go through. Mm -hmm. It was more... Um, you know, I'm I'm going to stay over here until I find out who you are. Mm. So it wasn't it wasn't it had nothing to do with uh, click. I'm a real sociable guy. Like okay. you know, I'm approachable, all that stuff. And and but it was more. You it's like going to a new school. Mm -hmm. If if you go to a new school and they don't open their arms to you, you just go to class. Okay. Like you don't sit there and trip on nobody. You just do your thing, whatever the case be. I don't want no trouble, and I don't want no trouble on my doorstep. So it wasn't. It had nothing to do with clicks. I, I watched everybody. I sat there and watched Dave when he told his first joke. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember you coming through. I can remember mm -hmm. Tony Woods. I can, oh, Fat Doctor, everybody. And I sat there and I watched these guys. And um, uh, you know, you know, it was a camaraderie shit, but it was also a, a pecking order. Yeah, but you weren't in the camaraderie of us. It wasn't. Well, camaraderie ship, and again, it was because if I walk to, a, if I go to a new right. school and the new school ain't f***ing with you like that, I'm not. I'm but why not do you think we weren't fucking? Why do you think people weren't f***ing with you? I can't. I can't tell you what other people right. think. Right. Like to this day, I'm a grown man. My one of my neighbors don't speak. I give two. <laughs> I give two. Right. And the reason being is because I, I don't know why he won't. Because I'm one of those. I'm I'm a dude that'll walk a little old lady across the street. Right. No question about it. Yeah, a little now, old lady, but would you rather walk someone else that wasn't? Nah, but I'm saying if she snatch her arm away, what am I do? Right. Uh, you know, right. what, right. what right. am I right. do? I'm I'm um uh, I got a buddy. Listen, man, I got a buddy 
name Andre. And and don't get me wrong, when I'm saying this stuff, I'm not saying it like I don't know how people view See me. You. Right, sure. I'm saying it in the context of I got a buddy, his name is Andre, about six, six, three, ten, big nigga. The sweetest teddy bear you ever want to meet. Everybody love Andre. Andre did 18 years in jail. Will strangle your ass. But the nicest guy in the world. And they people gravitate to him. And I'm not gonna lie, I wish I had that. Right, right. I, I, I just I'm ain't sure. got it. Right, you ain't got it. Well, that can be the I thing. Wish that could, the I had it. Let, let me ask you a question. Got it. All right, let me ask you a couple questions that was out in the, in the you know, sure. out here, and you answer them. You define them, and you say what you want to Absolutely. say. You brought up Chappelle. Yes. Uh, on his special, he mentioned about somebody going out with him, a comic, a right. little older comic, right. taking one of his jokes. I know, I know where you're going with I'm, this. I'm, 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 I, oh, I'm, oh, I'm glad that you. Yeah, let me yeah, finish yeah. that. So he went out on a, on a road yeah. with a comic, right. a headliner, and later on he saw the comic do his material, and he said, right. "Hey man, you did that's my joke." And yeah. the comic basically was you being you was one being you saying, "Hey, it wasn't me." Okay, okay, oh, okay, no. my bad. So it wasn't. So no, no, so you described you? Okay. that whole thing a little wrong. Okay, when he said it, it in his joke, mm -hmm. when he said it, when he because because again I didn't hear it because mm -hmm. I don't watch Dave like that. Okay, like mm -hmm. I don't really what when I say I don't watch Dave like that. Dave is everything people say Dave is to be, you know, okay. he, he earned his chops. Sure. But I don't really watch anybody like that. Okay. So I heard this story and I didn't pay any attention. I mean, I heard this story or whatever the case would be, mm -hmm. but I heard a comic, some comic, some dude on the internet asking. And then it's somebody said, I heard it was Ted Coffin. Oh, oh, so I, you know how you get connected to a story, right. somebody as they write and they inbox you or something, right. you know, where sure, you sure. get on your Facebook. So I'm reading this story, I'm like, what? Dave did what now? He asked, you know, I couldn't quite, uh, I didn't right. understand the story. A couple of days later, I see the video or something. Or, or no, no, he did it on a, one of his shows right, or something. Right, he sat down and talked about how Netflix was doing him wrong. Right, doing something wrong like that or right, whatever. And I saw it on something, okay. right? So I said, oh, this must be what, are you talking about? what they talking about. Mm -hmm. So I had another New York comic, you know, because the dude just was putting money in. It, it was some comic, young comic. He was just, so I called my man from New York. I said, who is this dude? I said, give me that dude's number. Mm. I said, give me that dude's number. Hell he gave yeah. me the number. I called the dude up. I said, yo, my man, what you talking like? Reckless, you talking dude. reckless? Yeah. What the f right, you, yeah. you, you, what you doing? Right. You know? Well, I just want to know. Well, my <laughs> ask me first. <laughs> right, right, you know, because I ain't got right. no problem. Pierre, you know me for a long on, time. Man. You know I ain't never had no problem facing up to whatever. Okay. All right. I don't even know what the f they talking about. Whatever Dave Chappelle talking well, about, sure. I never went on the road with Dave Chappelle. And that, that's one of the things I wondered. I was like, ne never mm, went on the road with Dave together. Chappelle. Right. And and then I'm gonna tell you who chimed in on the Wigs. Okay. Wigs promoter. is a is local a promoter. Wigs is a local promoter. He's an agent. He does a lot of shows. He does a lot of colleges. Mm -hmm. He said, "Bruh, it ain't." First of all, it's not even the same timeline. That's the first thing. Second of all, it's so different because Dave was a young comic. And yeah, somebody can t take advantage of a young comic. Right, sure. But I was a young comic too. I ain't want Dave Chappelle. I ain't know nothing about writing jokes. For in fact, in fact, the the funniest little known. You say you know a lot about me. Uh -oh. I'm gonna give you something that you don't know. First of all, you, t to finish that up, no. Right. Where's the camera? Which one hot? You <laughs> 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 No. Huh? That wasn't me. All right. Whatever. <laughs> Dave Chappelle talking about, <laughs> so find somebody else that's, that didn't Hang murder. It, right. Wasn't me. <laughs> right. I don't need Dave Chappelle's joke. Right. Dave know that. Okay. So, in fact, Dave, bring your <laughs> on here and tell to hey. Pierre <laughs> Panic Room and tell him whatever you talking about uh, wasn't uh, me. Uh, and and, and well, now I think said, about, it was you. I know he never said it was me. So, so I don't even it. know who he talked about. That dude but, just said, said it. Yeah, the dude said it, but everybody was just like, everybody him. heard it was Ted Coffin. You know the one thing I will say about about me, and I and I try not to step on people's toes. If something, if somebody says something about me for whatever reason, that shit catches fire. You 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 you, you my you, ass, yeah. that shit catches no, fire. Maybe you gotta somebody got yes. somebody yes. got Listen, bro. I know. You you can say that, but you, what what I will say what in, in my behalf is you gotta have some kind of proof, bro. No, you don't. Not today, you don't. Well, no, say something. No, it goes. It goes. You, Pierre, let me let me say this. And everybody standing out there. If you hear something and you repeat what you heard without any kind of context or facts, you a hoe. Oh. 
you you will be, you a hoe. So everybody who's repeated something, because you know what what happens. I may not know everything about you. I know something about it. Somebody says Pierre A, B, and C, or better yet, Pierre was out with this little gay dude and they was holding mm -hmm. hands, nigga. Right, well, you well, can't well. tell me that. Right. <laughs> I mean, you you understand what well, I'm I, saying? I, you I, can't tell me that. You can say, now what? I can do all that. What? Oh damn! Right. I know that. Do you true. think people think your personality could have done something like that? But Teddy kind of all, he kind of raw with it. He kind of rough with it. He might took the niggas jokes and shit. I'm just saying. Maybe no, let thought. me let me tell you how that sounds to me. That sounds like I'm in a I'm in a lineup. I get mm -hmm. picked up from the police. I'm in a lineup because I'm brown skin fit with a white shirt on. I fit the description. Right. And they said, well, if it ain't you, tell me who it was. I don't I know. All I know <laughs> it wasn't me. Right. So so. No, I didn't. I didn't. Right. I didn't do any. I didn't take anything. You know, and I want to clear up something else while we're on here. When I did Def Jam, and I do want to talk about Def Jam. Are we gonna how, do it? I'm, yeah. I got the. I got the. Uh, because I don't know, know how much time. Hey, listen, let me nigga, tell you something. Time. Let me just, good, sit back, relax. Good, we got, we got time. Cause let I got, I got forward. time today. I, I got lit. I got, I got time today right, for all that bullshit. Okay, I got no. the time today. I'm gonna bring up a couple of right. things that people so saying. Let me, I want to know. Uh, fair yeah. enough. Fair all enough. Right. But right. see, but what I, what I don't want to do is always be on the defense, cause I don't really give a fuck what they said. But let me clear up something else too. When I did Def Jam, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about one specific joke. A lot of people to this day. I want to get to that joke. Let me get that. I, want, I got some. Let me go a little order, brother. I got you, homie. I got you. This is why I do this show. I got you. Okay. But you Shit. got me. Nigga, I got in you on my show. Right. Versus. No, no, let me no, tell no, my no, story. No, I don't mind telling the story. Right. I don't mind telling the story. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm giving you a chance to tell the story. Fair Come enough. on, Ted. What about the time I heard? Did you do a 45 minute guest spot in front of Chris Rock? Hey, come on. I, I don't. I know you did. I'm saying what I heard. This is what I heard. You did a 45 minute. <laughs> is this thing on? It is. But have you heard? Is this have you ever heard on? that? Have you heard that rumor? No. You never heard that rumor before? No. Hey, okay. Okay. Then. No. Okay, we'll I can. No. We'll no, no, no. 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 Because I know what you're talking about. Okay. But it's not on. a. It's not a. It's no. It's no rumor. <sighs> this. This. This should be blowing me. Listen. <laughs> I know that's right. Listen. Listen. <laughs> and you should ask every question. I ain't got no problem okay. with you. I don't. I don't have right, no beef right. about that. Okay. Let me. Let me say this. Coming out, coming from the Def Jam era, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, and, and, and I don't, I want to try to paint the picture. When Def Jam hit, when Def, when Def Jam hit, first of all, Def Jam didn't know they were going to hit like oh, that. Without a doubt. I'm okay? Mm -hmm. And for real, for real, my story goes back a little further than that, and I hope we are able we to, know, get to get to that. that. I got Def Jam. But I'll tell you just about the Chris Rock thing. Okay. So when Def Jam hit, a lot of guys, Def Jam was threatening the guys, you know, you you mm -hmm. you do this for somebody else or you do that show or you whatever, mm -hmm. you won't work for us again. All that. And the people that mm -hmm. people out there that don't know anything about it, I'm gonna write a book one day mm -hmm. called The nice. Rise and Fall of a Black Comic and and, and we're gonna talk about the, all the stuff that used to happen behind with mm -hmm. Def Jam. Def Jam is like your Def Jam was like your your uncle who felt you on your ass oh, when you was five, but now the nigga wanna give you college money. Oh, ooh, Still got an ooh, issue with the, ooh. but you know you don't know if you want to take that money, yeah. and I'm I'm saying it that I get it. cross with because on one hand they help you helped you get to where you are, mm -hmm. but they pimped the fuck out you mm -hmm. when when everything went down. People don't know we made seven hundred and seventeen dollars yep. on episodes on Def Jam. Bet y'all didn't know that oh, well, seven hundred yeah. seven hundred and seventeen dollars. Yeah, mm -hmm. you 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 know mm -hmm. what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. And for the longest time, they sold it and sold it and sold it and sold it. To this day, I guarantee you, they owe both you and me. Mm -hmm. And we we didn't get all our money. I got a little residual, but I feel what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, a little residual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the Chris Rock thing, mm -hmm. let me tell you the, my Chris Rock story. And I have told this story before. Okay. Chris Rock, um, so I'm doing, I, I get a phone call, and I was doing shows I was like, I don't care what Def Jam say. I'm going out there to make that money. Oh, that's right. You pay me, I'm out. Chris Rock, uh, they called me from Detroit, and Detroit was one of my stomping grounds. Oh yeah. I, I used to do the, uh, I used to do the uh, Fox Theater, mm -hmm. and I used to do the uh, state, the state, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and so they called us out, and it, I think this was at the state, if I'm not mistaken, um, to do a show, and they said, listen, it's going to be you, Chris Rock. And James Stevenson the third. Okay. A That's lot of piece. people may not know, know James Stevenson. James Stevenson. He used to play the piano yeah, sure. and whatever. And he and he came from a 
probably a predominantly white side of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. comedy, oh, even though sure. he was a brother, right? So at the time, Chris Rock wasn't Chris Rock. He was Chris Rock, right. but he wasn't Chris Rock. Okay. So, so, but I still, out of, out of whatever word you want to use, I said, well, okay, they're probably going to let him headline. So in my contract, I, I was pretty smart. You know, I said, because the way I made my money, people don't understand, the way I made my money is I would go on the stage and prove I was worth the money you was paying me. I wasn't going on and say, you give me this money and I just go out and do a show. No, no, no. I was going to do that show for the next show. You I, know, I, respect that. I was busting people's ass because I needed to get paid on the next show. So I needed these promoters to say, oh, yeah, he was out here. He did this, that, and the third. So I signed a contract to be in the middle. Okay. The middle. Okay. 30 minutes. Okay. All right. Okay. James Stevenson was supposed to come on first. Okay. Got it. We get to Detroit because mm -hmm. it happened in Detroit. Okay. We get to Detroit three, four minutes before the show, and you know this shit happens. Three, four minutes, and it happened to me a lot of times. Three, four minutes before the show. Change the time. Change the time. <laughs> I knew you were going to It wasn't that. even a change of time. They was like, hey, we want you to MC." Oh, wow. Yes, because there was only three people on the show. Right. We want you to MC. We want James Stevenson III to come in front of Chris. I said, oh, no. Now, mind you, the phone call came from California. Okay. I was like, well, I don't know nobody in California. F*** right. them. I don't know them. Right, right, right. Oh, it was uh, Chris Agent. Okay, that's Chris's right, agent. Right. Ain't mine. Right. Your you contract know, say what your my contract, contract say. say what my contract say. Mm -hmm. Oh man, they done. so they pitching a fit. They going back and forth. Promoters coming to me. I was like, hey man, read the contract. I don't know what to tell you. You know, I mean, if he Chris Rock, let him get some of this fire. Ooh, point blank. Shit now. If he Chris Rock and I'm just Joe regular, let's cook. <laughs> so it cool. went back and forth, went back and forth, went back and forth. Long story short. They came to me and they said, listen, we'll give you more money, one, and two, we'll give you your time on stage. 30 minutes. 30 minutes, mm -hmm. right? I said, cool. I was still pissed, but right. I said, cool. Completely right. I went out on stage and I did, now, it wasn't, it wasn't, I did 30 minutes in front of Chris Rock. That wasn't, mm -hmm. that wasn't really what the, where the, where the, where the problem came in is what I did. I was still young. I was still brass. I was still, you know, you. Right. I don't care who you are. I'll bust your ass on this stage. Mm -hmm. I was in that neighborhood. And I went through that for a minute. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. I didn't do the business the way that you're supposed to do the business. In other words, I should have left space for Chris Rock to be Chris Rock. Okay, explain that. Explain it. When you go on stage and you, at, at the time, I'm, I'm knocking the ball over the fence. Right. Damn near I will. Sure. Or at least I'm thinking it. No, no. Everywhere I'm going, I'm getting standing ovations. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Sometimes when you have a money maker behind you who's tied, now that I know tied to these white agencies that's doing 100 shows a year and this and that, sometimes politically you got to take play the, the game. game. You got to play the game. You got to take. You got to play yeah, the game. Right. Now I'm saying that on the back side. Okay. If on the front side it was just me, and that goes back to what you were saying before, I didn't have an OG. Like everybody, well, who was your OG coming through? Me. One. Right. I didn't have a dude that say, hey, come here, young fella, let me tell you how to do this. Nah, you don't want to do that. Nah, you such and such. You know, blah, 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 this is how you do that. I just knew how to tell jokes and knew how to make them laugh and knew how to make them stand up. I ain't know nothing else. You give me 20 minutes, I'm the best 20 minute you give me, mm -hmm. period. I see dudes now that's is fire and this and that. Couldn't with me. Right, and right. that was my attitude. So so standoffish, it was, had nothing to do with standoffish. It was just like, listen, I love you, I'm I like you, right. I'm but gonna right. I'm going to bust your ass in front of your mother now. Now let's talk and about your Def Jam. Attitude. All right, let's talk about your Def Jam. Wait yeah. a minute. Okay. Chris Rock, just let me finish. Yeah. I did a show. I got out there and said, if I'm not the baddest you ever met, I give y'all your money back. You can say that, man. Yeah, at the time. I just said, yeah. I just said right. back then, I'm I was that nigga. You know. yes. So That's I went out did. there on stage, they All clapped, right. I said, stop clapping. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go back and reintroduce myself. Awesome. And if I'm not the baddest yeah. you ever saw, I'm gonna stand at that back door and I'm gonna get all y'all money back. And I went back, reintroduced myself, came out there and smoked the building. Then I took the mic. 
threw the mic down and walked off. Nigga, I was blackballed like a yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said, you, you, and I know eventually you're going to get, how did I get blackballed and why I keep saying it? It was the Chris Rock show. All right. All right. All right. All right. I, I lost enough. about. Come on. Half a million. No. I, 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 I lost, I lost, I lost close. I lost close to a million dollars. Wow. Wow. All right. Well, let, let's say how it started yeah. off when the public first saw you on Def Jam. Yes. You came on, you probably had one of the best set, set, top three sets on Def Jam. In That's the, in what the they tell yeah. me. Well, I'm telling you again, okay? So I saw. Um, you came off, of course, you want to let them niggas know, you nigga, you know what it is. You know, you told them, I'm going to bam, I'm going to get my stand ovation. I'm gonna get. That's a little cocky for us back there. You know, it was. Remember what you mm-hmm. just said? Mm-hmm. You delivered. You know, you delivered. You got a stand mm-hmm. ovation. Um, your persona was that, like, okay, this nigga is that nigga. He tells that. Most people want to feel like you're just performing and let them do that. You don't tell a nigga before how bad you are, right. of course. And that could rub people the wrong way. It obviously rub, rub Chris Rock the wrong way and maybe some other people, and that's why they might have done that to you felt that way. You got, I think you did. Chris Rock never did anything. He was always a gentleman. It was his agent. Well, okay. When I got blackballed, Chris okay, right. Rock had nothing to do with okay, it. Cool. Okay, cool. Okay, okay, okay. So I want to clear that up. Yeah. Fine. Um, did you do it three, two or three times? I did it three. Three, that's what I thought. Three. And you got stand ovation each time. That's yes. some bullshit. One show you had, and I had big, my girl Big Les on there. And yeah. you, you've talked about it before, but let me, mm. my crowd don't know. Right. When you did the arm thing. Yes. More like a, you know, it was an arm thing. Now, it's, when, it's basically when your comic stands up there, get somebody behind them, put their arms to them, and then they, they become their arms as the person tells a story. And eventually you want to get them to a certain position where they're doing something. Now, some comics felt bad because, you know what? They felt like it was, that was Fat Doctor's joke. And you took that out. Mm-hmm. Fat Doctor's a comic was kind of legend in our town, and you brought it out on stage right. for the masses. Right. Some comics felt like it was his joke. Mm-hmm. Not saying it was his joke, because it really a vaudeville. It's an older joke. Right. You know, he's there the only go. one had it. Just but he felt like good. it was his because it's, he did it in our, in our group, and you did it. Did you feel any kind of way about doing that joke because what people thought? No, because I, I, I didn't know Fat Doctor did that joke. Oh, you did? No. Oh, wait, I, found, I found oh, out oh, Fat wow. Doctor okay. did that joke. Okay, cool. But... Cool. I saw it from Ballville. I, in fact, yeah. if you sure. listen to, if you go back and listen to the Def Jam, I actually say, you know, I didn't write this joke. I created. I'm one of the baddest dudes that did it. it. Right. 1933 Ballville, and actually it went back to 1908. Mm, okay. 1933 was Lucy Arnaz, the Lucy Arnaz show. Mm-hmm. You know, you remember Lucy? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So it's been done like 12, 13 times throughout it, but it started in 1908. Right. So. Coming up, coming through, whatever the case may be. And what people don't realize is that's one of those jokes that's either going to go all the way or not <laughs> right, all the right, way at right. all. And it's it hits so great. It's going to hit or it's not. Now, the you question know. always has been, which we got to mm-hmm. answer, but right. Les is the girl, big Les, we had her on right. the show before. It worked so perfectly. Mm-hmm. The ending result was her grabbing your right. and she grabbed it. Yeah. People want to know. Was she playing? Was it, was, was, it, was, it, was it set up? Yeah, yeah. People yeah. always, to the. Right. What was that? And she danced years on ago? the show, though. She danced on the show, so you yeah. knew who she was. No, she danced. You didn't see her dancing on the show. No, didn't oh, know. Wow. Didn't. Know. In, in fact, in fact, if okay. you really want to know the truth, mm-hmm. was on tour with her. She was opening for who? She was. She was one of the background dancers for either BBD or well, yeah, Bobby Brown, something like that. Maybe somebody. Yeah, she, did she was that. somebody. She did okay. But see, when you go on tour, what right. people don't know, you on a big tour, you you you. And mind you, I, I'd, I'd never been on a long tour of comedy. Mm-hmm. I was with musical sick acts. Musical acts. Mm-hmm. So when you go on tour, you you don't travel together. You on one bus and they mm-hmm. on one bus and sure. they and mm-hmm. that performance they perform and then they leave and then your group comes out and then you know and then I'm a comic. I just, I kind of freestyle. It was just me. So never never knew who she was, right? So what happened was, and people, all, this is the question I always get, man, because I got in an argument actually not too long ago. Really? This dude said, man, I know it was set up. I, she was doing the thing before you even said something. No, 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 never set up. In fact, Def Jam didn't even know what I was going to do. Mm. What happened was the show, and, and I'll tell a Def Jam story, but the show, as far as that particular joke, the show, basically, I, I decided to do it. And when I decided to do it, it was one of those jokes that you can't, if you do it live, you got to say, hey, come on, you, 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 hey, you, you know, and if that girl doesn't come up, That's right. you know what I'm saying? Now you're struggling, you're doing a, I said, Def Jam, I need, I need to find at least three to six women that if I call them, mm-hmm. they'll get up on stage. They said, no problem. We'll find them. Smart. That's how, that's how I guess right. they found whoever. Smart. I wasn't even going to pick Leslie. What? I wasn't even going to pick her. What happened was when I looked out, 
I, you know, when I decided to do it, I look out because because it, it was it was in my back pocket. Okay. And I wasn't even going to do it, but I said, you know, as I'm doing my set, I said, you know what, I'm it's time. Right. I I can Felt kill it. him. Right. Right. So I went to point at this girl, and for some reason, I pointed at Leslie. Oh yeah. And she jumped up. She she went all the way through it. She did it. Blah blah blah. The rest is history. She did everything she was supposed to do. To, yes, to, with yeah, all. Yeah. Um, uh, as far as 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 me knowing, uh, you know, uh, 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 somebody else did it. It's two or three other people that did it. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, it was probably about five. The difference between the two is, I, I brought it to the stage. I'm always going to be synonymous with that joke. Right. But I don't even, I, you know, I, I got so much in my repertoire. That was just well, one no, piece, right, right. But that's, that's you know? that was just a huge joke. People had yeah. never seen it before. Well, yeah. even though you say it's been old, black mm -hmm. people didn't know that joke. Let's be real. The black okay. people did not know that joke. Well, I mean, I'm right. glad. Because well, sure. if they knew it, that, right. the no, wouldn't have right, caught exactly. fire. And I think that's what, you know, they felt like, right. you know, the D.C. people said that on it. It felt like, his, his well, joke, I don't know if D.C. Good. people said it. It's probably right. one or two comics. But I don't know no. about no DC people said because no, everywhere comics, I go, no, you comics, at, no, comics, comics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Comics, I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm behind your back. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, hearing. No, no. Okay. Listen, I, I I'm hearing what people I don't, say. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really care because, right. you know, ever since I've been doing this stuff, you know, these dudes pay homage when I walk through the door. Now, right. what what they say when I walk right. out? I don't know. Just spell my name right. Well, there you go. I've um, always been. You that went name. on a dope tour, a pre Kings of Comedy tour. It was. I remember it three the hard way. Remember that? Yeah. It was you, Bernie, and DL. If I'm not mistaken. Me, Bernie, and DL. Right. Yeah. Now, 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 that was a dope tour. How long did that go? It didn't feel like it went long. Did it, it? Did, it didn't go super long. Uh, I think I think all of our egos. Um, uh, it should have been a, it should have been tour for two years straight sure. because we were selling out everything. But I think in between the promoter not really, really wanting to pay, mm -hmm. along with because we had to set the way we had to set that show up is. Um, we had to change positions. That's what I was going to ask we you. We had to change spots. Well, every, like every couple of shows? Every show. No, oh, wow. every show. Okay. You know, if you went on first this show, I would go on last, and the next show, it would right. switch. Sure. And that show, that, 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 that was the original, that was the original Kings of Comedy show. I don't care who come on and say they was this and they was that right. and they was sure. blah, blah, sure. blah. That was the original, that was the original show. And when I tell you, the times that I had to go on last, I could, I never forget. I was in Houston, this particular show, and I was, you know, I had nice clothes. I nice was sure. laid. I was ready to go. Sure. And and DL, and Bernie, uh, DL went on first, and DL. I mean, he hit the ball, and we did. We couldn't find the ball. I mean, he he knocked it clean out the ballpark, mm -hmm. and so I was like, ah, sh <laughs> you know. And people right, think right. people think that you know I never was. Fluttered or fl right, flustered, right, or right, right, right. you know, yeah, you yeah, gonna be on right, fire, yeah. be on yeah, fire. Yeah. And Bernie Mac went on, and when Bernie Mac went on, I mean, it was something crazy. And that was the only time that I actually went back in the dressing room and changed my clothes back wow. into my regular clothes because I figured if I was gonna get my ass whooped, it's not gonna be in my good suit. <laughs> I, and I went out there <laughs> and I all oh, I survived. Right, I did, right. You know, people are, oh man, right, you right. kept, but I I had to survive because the show was that funny, where you, there was no room for error. Like if you did not hit another hundred, anything below a hundred. And that's how strong that show was. Not, no, no, that man, was probably no. one of the strongest shows to At this that date. Time, that was like early '90s, mid '90s, like '93. Yeah, date. Yeah, I that's, mean, that's some fire. Straight fire. And Bernie was Bernie was clicking on. When I say all cylinders, oh, yeah. all cylinders. Yes, yes. And that yes. was and, and that show actually told me. You belong. You belong. Nice. You nice. belong. No, no, no. Yeah. no that one. Belong. That one. And and the show that I did with. Um, uh, um, at the Comedy Act Theater, okay, with Robin Harris. Are you and because I just saw something recently, but are you and DL cool? Because he's on Tony Rock was on Bill Bellamy show talking about you. You know, you heard, you know. No, you know, I haven't heard it. Oh God, damn! I don't. Okay, all right. Well, I, let me say, let me say, Pierre's panic room. I don't keep up with this. <laughs> so, all right. so, so. All right, well, then I'm gonna tell you. Uh, right, Bill tell Bellamy has a podcast, and Tony yeah. Rock was on it, uh -huh. and he basically said, "I never seen DL ever angry except the time he worked with Teddy Carpenter." And Teddy Carpenter went in front of him and did too much time where he had to cuss Teddy Carpenter out after the show. First of all, you know, I just, I don't even. Oh. <laughs> shit. Man, okay, I heard that. 
no, but this is a while back. You're telling me something new. Okay. So it never hearing that, hell, okay. no. what did DL say? Hey, DL, DL. would have said. <laughs> Listen, man. Let me let me say this, man. You see how much you get put on you, man. Do you understand it? Do you understand how much shit you get heaved up on your? Nah, because I'm a grown ass man, so, so I don't, don't understand don't sit why there. Nah, nah, nah. nah. You know, I don't I don't really lose no sleep over that. I man. mean, I mean, when you say, do I see get put on? Yeah, but I, I feel like this this how I feel. First of all, back then. Here's here's the deal, two things, and I want to address that. That never happened. Okay. DL ain't never cussed me out. DL yeah. was actually one of my best friends. Sure. In in the business, DL was one of my best friends. Me and DL had a different falling out. Oh wow! It's a different fall, and that's why I'm saying the the story the the stories that you're coming up with, and I, I you you ask what you want to ask. I'm just saying what actually, people say around. So I want no, to no, I got you. But here, but so here's here's the here's where the problem comes in. It's always close to the story. Right. It ain't it ain't the actual mm-hmm. story. So I, I feel like on one defense, prime example, uh, um, uh, Joe Torrey mm-hmm. did a show with us one time. Mm-hmm. I did a show where I had Joe Torrey and Bernie Mac and and all of these guys in, in D.C. at Howard Theater. Okay. And for some reason, Joe Torrey's hat got lost. Hell no. You remember he used to wear the, the cowboy, cowboy hat? You remember yeah. that? But guess what the story was? Damn near up until now. I stole this nigga's hat. Why the f would I want to wear a cowboy hat (laughs) at any in (laughs) DC? Not just in DC (laughs) at any time. You know what I'm saying? But that was the story. I think I heard that too. You were trying to shake that was the that was the story. He was mad, you know, he was a little cock diesel nigga at the time. I said, I'm gonna have to fight this little nigga. (laughs) To fight this little nigga. And you know, we had a love hate relationship, but you no, know, no, right. I never stole that man's hat. All right, all right. Well, well here's something else. This is a good. But no, but, but let me answer the DL because oh, okay. it's it's a, it's a good story okay. behind. It's a okay. it's it's a story, and I know you want to ask some questions, but I'm no, I'm gonna yeah. tell you some stuff that you don't know. Me and DL, you know, it's funny because we never really had a falling out. We just, we just. Listen, my story is simple. I'm coming through. I'm doing comedy. I'm at the top of the game. I had a late night talk show called In the Dark with Teddy Carpenter. Yeah, but this is this is this is the mm-hmm. background story. I had a late night, they they called me. I had to I had to go up and do a show. We had, it was six comics, and we had you had to prove that you could do late night. So you had to do a monologue and you had to do the interview. And I already knew in my mind, because this was preconceived, I already knew years ago I was gonna do a late night talk show. I knew it. So when this came about, they had these producers. They had producers for everybody. I was the only person that didn't have a producer. So they, yeah, I was the only person that didn't have a producer. The average white band was my house band. I already had it in my head how my show was going to go. Madeline Woods was my guest host. Wow, okay. I called her out of the blue. And and people don't know Madeline Woods. She was one of the baddest, finest, I don't know what. They gave her a wardrobe. Paul Mooney was one of the writers. Mm. D. Militant was one of the writers. Okay. Um, uh, Buddy Lewis was one of the writers. Okay. I already had it in my head how I was gonna go. So we in Paramount was the studio. Right. What ended up happening was they gave us a, they gave us a show. I had to compete against six other comics that mm-hmm. they they handpicked. At the end of everybody doing what they did. I was the person, and I was like, nah, I'm not gonna take it unless you let me do another show to prove I am that dude. But they said you had to do it already. Don't matter. See, that's the Don't Teddy. matter. That's the right Don't there. matter. I wanna show, because you gotta understand the way Hollywood works is they can give you a show, but then they, in the process, and this has happened to me before, you get picked for something and they say, hey, we wanna hold you. You get a, a holding deal, deal for right. whatever, right. Right. but they end up picking her. So I wanted to make sure I cemented myself. We did another show, and the show was better than the first one. And I tell you who was actually on the show. Um, ah, sh- um, uh, uh, man, 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 man. Uh, Male, female? D- uh, no, uh, sh- man. It, it'll come to me. Mm-hmm. So, so, but in the process of doing the show, DL was one of my best friends, mm-hmm. period. And I said, DL, I got in my mind, I got a rotating person that I'm gonna have rotating. 
And I, I don't want a producer to find comics. I, I wanted to do everything different than they normally did at a late night show. So what they would do is they would send producers out and send in the audience, some white dudes, send the audience and judge us, which they didn't know anything about us. I wanted to actually send a legitimate stand-up comic to say, hey, if you come across whatever off of your word, I'm going to put them on the show. And it was a person that was constantly rotating who would come in and do what they do. We talk, blah, blah, blah. And we'll introduce him together. And he would do it. That was the concept. So DL was my person. I brought DL in and I said, yo, you my man. If this thing takes off, I got you. And this is on my children. I got I mean, you. Right. So the show ended up holding deals, blah, blah, blah. We couldn't get on TV because of the Seinfeld reruns. When you do a late night talk show, you have to be in five cities, okay? Mm -hmm. In one city, they had Seinfeld at 11.30, and Seinfeld reruns was making a ton of money. Sure. So we couldn't get on the air. Right, sure. So they held us, held us, held us, held us. New management came in, and you know how Hollywood is. Mm -hmm. If new people come in, everything they had is killed. Oh, yeah. They oh, want yeah. everything, and that's what ended up happening to my show. Um, I did get a chance to... You know, a couple of other late night shows had to go up against Chris uh, Spencer, Spencer mm -hmm. uh, whatever Goodbye, case may be. Oh, yeah. and, and in fact, th what came back to me was Chris was a little bit more easier with white people in Nebraska Damn. because be, because it, 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 no matter how black you are, you still have to appeal. They say Hollywood, sure. you have to appeal to people in Nebraska. Never really got that, but it is what it is. Um, DL was always my man. Fast forward, the situation happened with Chris Rock. I got blackballed from the agencies, mm. from the agencies. Mm. Agencies, and people say, how do you get blackballed from agencies? Agencies, what they are able to do are, is if they want to keep you off, in other words, they put packages together. Sure. I, I, I was being asked for from a lot of promoters, hey, we want Ted Carpenter. They would do one or two things. Oh, he's working. Well, that promoter don't know that. Right. So they'll yeah. just go off and say, I "Well, who that, else yeah. you got?" I That's got number that. one. And then number two, if you was if you if it was a show and they said, "I want him, him, and him," and Ted Carpenter, that agent was saying, "No, if you get him, he we won't work. work. We we won't put none of my." Well, guess what? Because that Chris Rock situation. So when you say, "How did I lose that money?" That's how of I course. lost that money. I, lost my, yeah. I found out one of our agents that we were both signed with DL and I. Um. I found, you know, he was taking some money. So I, you know, Impressive. I'm being me. Right. In fact, uh, me and some some brothers, some 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 Muslim brothers, right. I had them go see them. You know, when well, I was a little later on. But right. I found out they was taking some money. You know, blah, blah, blah. He felt embarrassed. He he asked me from their agency. DL felt embarrassed? No. Oh, the, 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 agent. the agent. Okay. So in the process, I stopped getting all these, all of a sudden, sure. stopped getting all these big shows. Sure. DL was slowly becoming the man. In right. fact, it was right before the DL Hughley show. Okay. So the DL Hughley show, guess who, guess who, guess who actually got all the way to the end? As a friend of his. As the friend. But wait, Remember? Was it John Hinton? Was it, it was me. Oh. I got all the way to the end. And guess who walks through the door? Guess who it was? The, the agent. Guess who was the executive producer of the show? Oh, it was Asia? Chris Rock. Oh, hell no. Nah. See, see? You see, see how it is Mother sometimes? Mother Happens sometimes? Walking in the hallway. He, he didn't say nothing. He spoke. And I was like, Shit. mother f Yeah. Yeah. So, so you I, said I, it, you and DL aren't so, as close so, so, so the DL thing happened. I didn't get the part. You right. know, John Hennon right. ended up, the, okay. the, stu the story is John Hennon ended up getting it. And, um, you know, whatnot. I started losing business, couldn't quite figure out why I was losing the business, this, that, and a whole bunch of other things happened. But what ended up happening, Dio was my, always my man. And and he's my man too. Dio's like a brother to me. And I, okay. he gonna see it, And I, but I, I'm I, just gonna keep the shit 100. Keep it one buck, keep it a buck. Um, um, Dio's always been my brother. We, we did a show in Ohio. And I hear him talk about a lot of things. And I was a little pissed off that he's never mentioned this okay. ever. And, and but DL's my brother. Okay. We do a show in Ohio. Remember, DL used to do twenty minutes of snapping. Right. You know, in, in his show, like, mm -hmm. he would go in the audience. Well, we would people don't realize that Def Jam. A lot of these shows was being done 
for a lot of these hood niggas. Mm -hmm. And they was putting up money. Sure, drug they dealers. Drug yeah, dealers. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of drug dealers. You, thank you, son. Thank you, no, thank you all. No question. So <laughs> sure. DL went in on this dude, and the dude wasn't having it. Dude got up, and I noticed. I did my thing, and DL was after me. Dude got up. He walked out. I noticed three, four, five other guys Ooh. walked out, too. Um, now, DL was on stage. He comes back, and they getting, they talking about shooting DL on stage. What? All my children. How you know that? Because I was off stage watching. Oh, listen, watching on here, here. And so this bit. this particular guy who who was running the stuff, these seemed to be all his folks. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, niggas is backstage. They peeking through the curtains. They doing Ooh. all of this. So my cousin, DC police officer, his name is Arthur. Mm -hmm. He said, "Man, something about to go down, man." I said, "Yeah, they talking about shooting DL on stage." I, and they, I was still, he just doing his thing. He don't know nothing about it. And I was like, "Man, you know, like what the." And then I just went on stage and I said, I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, man, these dudes talking about hurting you. Get off stage. I'll finish your show. What? During his act? During God his act. Damn. Because they right. was, they was, they was peeking right. through the window. I mean, through the right. curtains right. and whatever. So he was shocked because he, you know, shocked. Somebody right. walk on stage and right. you know right. what? They going to do what? And all my, again, all my children, I don't want to keep saying that, but right. all my yeah. children, somebody turned the whole house lights off in the theater. Pitch black? Pitch black. Wow. Everybody started running and screaming, and we, we started ducking because we didn't know if somebody was just going to start letting Sweet, off. Right, sure. Somehow we get out the side door. My cousin tell me, get out here, come out here. We go down the side. They don't do nothing. I, I don't know where they at, but we thought we, I honestly thought I was going to get shot. I mean, mm. that's straight up. Sure. We get out the side door. We get downstairs. For some reason, there's a police officer down there. I don't know why he's in the back because that's where the limos was. Sure. We tell him what happened. He's he's like, yeah, get in this car. They'll take y'all back to the hotel. We go out front because you still got to kind of go out in front of the building. Oh, sure, I get it. They yeah. out fighting in front of the building. They out there damn near turning over a limo because they think it's ours. Oh, wow. So we tripping. Like, we really tripping. We get back to the hotel, get all of our all of our. Right. Get in the hotel and drive all the way to, I want to say, I want to say Columbus. Columbus, right. It's, it's a dude that did stand-up comedy. He owned a club in Ohio. What's his name? Andrew Ford. Andrew Ford. We drove, we paid the we paid the driver like 500 to drive us all the way. Now, mind you, we always get paid before the show. Right, sure, so sure, all sure. of us are paid. Yeah. We drive all the way. I think he lived in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, I think did. his club. Right. We drive all the way to Columbus, Ohio, and walk through the door. He's shocked. What y'all doing here? I thought y'all had a show. We tell him the story, whatever. DL and I both went up on stage. Whatever show they had, they, right. you know, people was there. They, sure, like, y'all here. DL did two hours. I did two hours. <laughs> I think the show ended about five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock. So y'all had to get them jokes out. We had to that. get them jokes out. <laughs> get them jokes out and system. we all laughed and flew out of that. Nothing, no, no big deal, but the reason that we we probably parted is when this stuff started happening and started happening to me, DL was taking off. Sure. My stuff was, they was cutting my legs up from under me. So finally, you know, I came to him and I was like, yo, man, I don't want none of your money, but I need help. So what I need is, you know, why don't you walk in the office with me? Because they're not going to with you. But I yeah, figure if man. we show a bond that, you know, this is they the have no choice. You walk yeah. into. Okay. That never happened. He offered me some money one time. I was like, no, nah, I don't want your money. Mm -hmm. I don't want your money. I want to be able to make my own money. Um, two or three things happened, this, that, and the third. He offered some dates some years later. Long story short, nothing nothing ever right. came out of it. So right. I just got to the point where I was just like, it is what it is. And that's why but we you got to be heard about it a little bit, man. Because I'm bothered by it. Yeah, because I'm bothered friends, by it man. because it's, it's not that. Because let me, let me tell you this. When people go to L.A., and you know, you know that you live, mm -hmm. you live there. Mm -hmm. And I hear stories about how you was in LA, mm -hmm. you know, but it's a survival thing. It's yeah, a survival right. thing. And Pierre's this and Pierre's that and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. No, Pierre's trying to survive because mm -hmm. nobody's just going to give you anything. You want to earn it. Sure. So, was I bothered by? I'm bothered by it to this day because I'm, a, I'm just going to keep this shit a hundred. Mm -hmm. Let somebody step on stage and save me. Let somebody jump in front of a bullet. Let somebody act like they're going to jump in front of a bullet and save me. 
where I can go home to my children every day and I can make the millions I'm making now, right. I can't face them. So when DL would see me, you could tell he know, he, you feel funny. Mm-hmm. It's, it's almost like um, it's almost like you having a girlfriend mm-hmm. and, and, or a wife or somebody mm-hmm. and you introduce me to her and now y'all broke up and six months later, I'm going with her. So now every time I see you, I'm like, mm-hmm. it's a very uncomfortable feeling. Right. But it, it never had to be because when I actually say you was my man, I meant it from the day I said it. It just didn't come back to me that way. Right. So, I mean, we, you know, I talked to him about everything. Hey, man, when you go through a comedy club, why don't you do a deal where three weeks later I come through? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, you know, we'll figure out the money. I don't give the money at that point because I, I went from I went from maybe six hundred thousand dollars to sixty right and mm. I was hustling my sixty right I went from six cars right right big house I remember, yeah, I remember that to, but that's about the deal, about the deal. would y'all like you don't think there's rec- no reconciliation and here's my second thing too do you feel like DL owes you to talk to some promoters or some comedy club just because y'all were friends back in the day do you think it might no I don't I don't know? think I don't think he I don't think you I don't you know, it's an odd question because I don't think he owes me anything. Mm-hmm. I just think that let him save my life. Mm. And you tell me what it's worth. Okay. No, no, I, I, I can respect that. All right, let's move on to something different besides deal. The Apollo, you almost had a chance to host the Apollo. They got down to like Rudy Rush, Damon Williams, and you. Do you remember that? I mean, in fact, we rolled back in the car together. Oh, New for York. Real? We dropped some chicks off, and then we drove back from because you were you hosting. Remember? Hosting? No, no, you were trying to audition to be the host. I guess it was. Oh, okay. And you, you know, you went up there to try to be the host. You were like one of the top three to be in. You had okay. To get it. Yeah, I hosted Apollo for like like eight shows. Like, yeah, but but this is before that. I guess yeah. you hadn't gotten it yet. We were talking about going back mm-hmm. as we were driving back. We had a long conversation. It was four or five hours back, and even then, you said something to me that was kind of pro- profound. You said, "P, now what, what, what year was this?" What was I don't know. I don't. You, 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 I didn't, brother, you, you telling Apollo. me stuff that I, I okay, don't you remember. You hosted Apollo. You remember when you hosted Apollo? What I don't remember what year. Okay, let's say I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go down. I got to a lot. Years. I got a lot of in my chest, man. Okay. I ain't gonna lie. I got 37 years in. Okay, probably more than that. Well, we and drove back. Whatever was the mid- see what you telling me. Like okay, I, okay. okay. Well, I remember. So okay. that's what we that's what we here for. So I remember driving back. We dropped some chicks off in somewhere in New York, and me and you drove back. Okay. You said, P, I'm not driving. It's a long drive from New York to D.C. is about a good about four, four or five hours. Yeah, yeah. four hours. Yeah. You know, boom, we drive back. You said, P, I got to change the way I am. This is what you told me. You said, my attitude, my disposition, people are just, you know, this was back then. This was 2003, 4, 5, maybe. I don't know what year that was. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn, to hear you say that at the time. You know, because I kind of heard, you know, we hear you kind of both, just like you said, you, you, you make demands, you tell people, I want this, I want that. Not saying it's wrong, but that's what you do. You is who you are. I want it this way, I want it that way. And some, sometimes it rubs off the people who feel like, hey, you ain't even at that level to talk like this. But to you, you mm-hmm. believe you was at that level. Mm-hmm. But I feel like when you drove back, you told me that. You said, I, I'm going to change, man. I, I got to change. Because I think you felt that even back then that people were starting to, you know, cut your legs out from underneath you at times. Would you, would you, would you agree with that? Twenty years ago, um, you felt not, that not so much with comics and people. See, mm-hmm. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta realize. You know, I would hear stuff, and like I said, stuff would stick. You know, this dude is hard to work with. Well, how am I hard to work with when I'm the headliner? All y'all came in front of me. Everybody's coming in front of me. I don't have to deal with you. I just deal with the promoter and the money. So how do you become hard to work with? See, 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 it's a psychological thing. When you going in, and you kicking in doors. Everybody wants you to you cut you down. A lot of times. You get built up to cut down. Mm. I, I I wasn't bragging. I was just good at what I did. Mm-hmm. So so you, sometimes when you start hearing things, you're like, okay, I'm gonna let them believe what they believe. If 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 a dog if a dog barks, he got this rubber, rah, 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 he might not bite nobody. But because you believe it, he gonna keep going with it. Mm-hmm. You know, oh man, get your dog. Yeah. Well, that's what that's how it turned out to be. So me changing, I I think I think if I said, if I, again, I don't remember this, but if, if, if it, and it, and it probably did happen, yeah, in the car. but it, but it's a concept of being more, cause we talked about this one time before mm-hmm. you and I had conversations mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. her and it's, it's a concept of being more open, being more approachable. Right. Now, mind you, everyday people can approach me, but you know, when you get in front of industry guys and blah, 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 everybody has their little square to stand on. And I always respected that. 
you know, I just seemed like, you know, mines wouldn't be respected. So when I, as I kept hearing stories, the stories was, me and my boys would get together and laugh about how wrong the stories are. But they kept adding up. Like, you know, you get something wrong. Man, I heard you was with that little fat chick with one eye. And you laugh at all. But then all of a sudden, I heard you with, with two fat chicks. Right, and right, even, right, right. I heard you was with the fat chick's mother. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, good Lord. And mm -hmm. they kept adding up, adding up. Yeah. And it, and so after a while, you're like, okay, well, let me do something different. You know, let me, let me, let me do something different, whatever. And that's what I've been doing, doing, you know, you know, reaching out, letting some young comics reach out. And I even have a little thing, um, and I'll probably even do it tomorrow at um, the comedy convention. You know, don't be me. Don't 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 be me. And What's what I me? what I okay. mean by that is be me. Be as good as you can be. Be as good as they say you are. Be as whatever. But one of the if somebody says, What did you do back then that you made a mistake on? Nothing other than speaking up when these white boys stole my money. Sometimes you have to play the game. Sure. And because I didn't have an OG to say, Hey, you know what? You ain't in a position to speak up. I, I equate myself like an old blues singer, whereas all they want to do is go on the road and sing music. They don't know it's residuals, right. and they don't know that it's you know you you Other make business. money, mm -hmm. uh, you make money for, for for the the masters and all of this mm -hmm. stuff. So when their time runs out, these people still making money off of them because of the masters. Mm -hmm. And so I, I I had to think a little different in terms of. Because all my all my material was based off of survival. Now, sure, it wasn't it wasn't based off of, you know, Down okay, the road, yeah. Because right. mm -hmm. if you would ask me, what are you gonna do five years from now? Nigga, I don't know. Keep grinding. You know, I was gonna grind. I was gonna grind till I ain't had no more jokes right. in me. And then right. when I look up, hopefully have a pile of money, you sure. know, sitting in. So my story, you know, my story is a little unique. And I don't even mind. I'm just saying, if you gonna say something about me. Just spell my name right, or at least get the story right. 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 You know, and this is not, this is a story. You, mm -hmm. you did something a lot of people don't do comics, and I, I gotta give you kudos. You own mm -hmm. your own comedy club. Yeah, I own a comedy club. You own a comedy club, man. That's yeah. not an easy. But I think it's I kinda... took that money and I took that money that I made. I rolled the dice. I opened up a comedy club in in Washington D.C. Yeah, yeah, the black one. And yeah. I, I I immediately got blacklisted again. Well, first of all, how long was the club last? How long? The, the club, club last? lasted for five years. Wow, that's good. Okay, well, how, what do you mean? I mean, uh, immediately got black. Because again. because you're in the business, okay. you don't know all the piranhas that's around the business. Um, when I opened the comedy club, I was probably four miles from the improv. Oh, all right now. You ain't think about that. When you open up a comedy club back in nineteen, back in two thousand. What I wasn't, yeah, yeah. no. Why would I think about? It? They wasn't letting people like me in the in there. Okay. I mean, let's just keep it a hundred. I I I have to go back in the 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 improv is a mainstay in comedy, mm -hmm. but they wasn't walking around holding no parades for a lot of black acts sure. until Def Jam sure. showed up. Am, am I correct? No, yeah. And there wasn't a big franchise. They had a certain amount of clubs, this, that, in Hollywood and certain places. So now the club was fairly new in, oh, okay. in D.C. Okay. I never played the club. I mm -hmm. think I, 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 yes, I have. I played the, the improv. And I'm actually getting ready to go back to the improv after 15, 20 years. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's you're good, right. Good. So because it's new management, new mm -hmm. attitude, and the mm -hmm. whole nine. But back then, an improv was notorious, you know, um, at, at back then, hey, if you play with him, we got 40 clubs, he has one. What do you want to do? And most of these clubs, including DL, this was, a, again, it was another conversation. Him and I sat out in front of my club. DL stepped in my club when it was closed. No, no, we, you, we were open. Oh, oh, oh night, okay. At right. nighttime when, right. when he wasn't on stage. Okay. And we talked about a way that he could do the stage because he didn't want to step on their toes. And I had to do that with probably – seven, eight comics, and I, you, sure. we know the names and the whole sure. nine yards. Sure. So it was a lot of comics, including the DC comics, never stepped in the club once. So when I, you know, if you open a club, you you know, you would think certain people would want to play. Nah. Not the business, bro. So, so, 
I mean, we had the money to pay people. Yeah, but one time, you your club is one. The improv was 20, 30. That's what they still uh, do this uh, Yeah, day. but uh, but again, if you look at everything that way, no black no black businesses I mean, would be right. owned. You're because right. if you don't decide who who runs you, do you run do you run you or do the agency or the you know whatever? When you get to a certain level, it is to me subconsciously it is your job to make sure that these level, black right. these black clubs and these black locations and these black stores they stay open sure and so I they agree. need your help to come in there and stay open but my thing has always been ownership i was always taught ownership right. you own you know so if they didn't let me play anywhere guess what i can do i can be in my own club so it was a little running joke after that you go to teddy cobner club he gonna do the whole two hours i ain't had no choice yeah, yeah i'm gonna say you did that was a i had no choice it. Because I, 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 and I can, and, I, and I'll put it like this, and I'll say this, and I'll give y'all a little tidbit. It's a dude that come on y'all's channel that's, that's a part of y'all's crew right now that was supposed to come to my club with a whole bunch of crew and never showed up. I had to come back from New Orleans, leave my bags in the airport, jump in the cab, Mike, Mike Brooks will tell you, and get on stage, walk through the back door, and I did the whole two hours by myself. Crowd never, never, you know, never asked for no money back. Blah. Yeah. I had booked another act. Right. I was getting situations like that. Why, why did they cancel? Why did they? Why, why couldn't did tell, you. They wouldn't this, tell you. They wouldn't tell To this day. Really? To this day. I'll but I was getting guys. Yeah, 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 yeah to exactly. I'll talk to them. What the well, fuck? Well, yeah, find out. Yeah. Well, all right. Let me let me wrap, move some forward. Just a couple yeah. of questions, more questions. Yeah, because man, you know I like what? This interview. I ain't telling my story. Okay. Well, you told me enough. <laughs> Tell my story. Well, all, all the questions have been, and I'm, I'm going to jump okay. back on you now. All mm -hmm. the questions have been, there. you did this, you did that. Did you hear that? Did you foot Did you? I ain't tell right, my story. Right. But I just, no, whatever, but I asked you the questions I've heard about, mm. you know, so I wanted to get that, to get you, mm -hmm. let you, let you get up on my network and say that, you know, yeah. brother, I wouldn't, yeah, I mean, I'm not, it's not a but good I mean, job. You know, this is stuff that. No, I got you. I, mean, I got you, talk about but. What you were saying. I got you, but it's important that, you know, when you take an opportunity like this, you want to talk about the positive stuff, too. Sure. You want to be able to put I just in, said you was a kid. You, you, you want to put you in. You had an Apollo job. You had you yeah. the three the hard yeah, way. Yeah, but that's that's like, you know, and even you said it. You say, hey, if we keep talking about BAPS and we keep talking about that's great. What we doing now? You know, what are you doing now? Can, can I get to that? Yeah, can I get to that, Nick? But, but, why, but I nigga. see, Let me but do I, this. But I see, but I see 13 people giving you them signs. And and then she yawned twice, and I'm like, hey, you know, man, I need to tell that. my story. I'll run this Turn these mics right, out. You notice right. I ain't drink that water. That's you got right old, shit, I think old boy had that long. water. These things have batteries in it, bro. Yeah. You, you want to fall you out? Got, you got some good equipment, too. Okay. Man. All right. So I'm going to give you props on this. And yeah. this might look weird to give you props on this. Yeah. You one time was on the uh, Metro talking about, you know, someone asked you for an autograph, and you released Give a heartfelt message about how you felt you had fell off a little bit, you know what I'm saying? You lost your cars and all that kind of stuff. To mm. even do that to people. Do you remember doing that? Do you remember doing that? No. You never got on the. You asked me, do I remember doing it? Oh, okay. I mean, you didn't do it. Okay. I mean, you right. didn't do it. But I just felt when well, someone told me the story, I said, that's pretty. That's pretty I got good. on the metro? No, you were on a bus and you had mentioned, or a train station, it was a train, metro train, and someone asked you for an autograph. And you were talking about how you used to be really bigger and now that you're, you know, you lost your cars, your house, or whatever, that how it's humbled you. In fact, someone asked you for an autograph and how humbling it was. No, because you just mentioned about how you had six hundred thousand and you went down to sixty bucks. Yeah, but I so ain't go to zero. I always had cars. Well, well, no, I always right, had two right. or three cars. But you gave us some cars. Had, you had some cars. Oh yeah, I gave. Oh, did you know we would go? Yeah, I drive down, a yeah. hoopty now. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. What's the fact that you can yeah, speak no, about no, that? No, I got a Benz, but I got a hoopty. I drive a hoopty. Oh, yeah, I went from I went from I went from doing so. I jump on Metro sometimes because I, I ride my bike. I do okay, other right, stuff sure. or whatever. So I I don't know what the context was. Okay. But. It's a while back. But I get a lot of people to come up and I get a lot of people, I know what you're getting at. I get a lot of people come up and they 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 come up to me as if I've been locked up for 15 years. Sure, yeah, yeah. Damn, man, where you right, man, right. you was my favorite dude. God yeah. Yeah. damn. I you you I used to watch you, da, 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 then I ain't never see you again. You can't explain to everybody. Sure. You know how you know your back your backstory. I'm like, hey, you know, da 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 da. da. So I talk, right? But I don't I don't go into like what we did today. I don't go sure. into the long story. Hey, sure. you know what? This that and blah blah blah, and this happened and that. So so people, the one thing that's never fell off is my show. There you go. I admit that. They can they can talk about a lot of stuff around, but the one thing I look at again, I look I equate it to a blues singer. 
you gonna you gonna lose that woman, the one you love the most, you know, and all that. But you know what you're going to lose is that music. You, you still can sing. You there still you can play those instruments. So as far as a show, I'm still that motherfucker. That ain't going to never. It's, to me, stand-up is like a Ph.D. You can't take that from me. Right. You, can, you, can, you can take away a lot of shows. Right. You, can, you can do whatever. I'll find a little hole to play in. I'll find, I'll find some, some, a group somewhere of a 1,000 people who still like Ted Carpenter. I, sure. I I can still get up on stage with the best. I don't I don't care who they are. You pay me the money, and I don't even I don't even ask for top dollar. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm getting a ton of sh that's why I'm getting a ton of shows, because I I'm I'm a I'm a Negro League baseball player. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I can play all these white boys all this money, and I can go get the little Negro League baseball player. He can play just as good as him, but I ain't got to pay him as much. Mm -hmm. And so. These little five and six thousands mm -hmm. when Jokers is making fifteen and twenty, mm -hmm. and they can put me anywhere in the lineup. Oh, they loving it. Promoters are loving it because guess what? I already I'm already going to have a sold out show with him, him, and him. Mm -hmm. Why put another twenty thousand dollar act in there? Who can know. we get? Who right, can we solid. get? Solid. Ted Carpenter. What is he working for? Oh, he'll do it for seven. Right. Offer the nigga six on a good day, right. you know, and that's what I get. So right, I get sure, phone sure. calls out the blue. Hey man, you want to do a show with blah blah blah? What's the money? How does such it feel like? Do you feel like you're working your way back to where you were? Absolutely. You like, yeah. I mean, it's. it's I felt that way. I, yeah. I never, <laughs> I never, I got tired of the game. I got mm. tired of, uh, I got tired of it. I'm not gonna lie to you. Sure. But yeah, definitely working my way back. I didn't gain weight. I didn't got, you know, a little bit of depression and set in, sure. blah, blah, blah. Because if you can't get back to that six, seven hundred, you know what hurts me the most? It's not even the comedy game. What hurts me the most is when I had the money, it's almost like a drug dealer. You always think that money's going to keep coming. Mm -hmm. And and when that money gets cut off, you start hustling and doing stuff and blah, 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 and such and such. Mm -hmm. It was the first time that I, you know, and I, I even say this out loud, I don't, my kids don't even know it. It's the first time that, that, you know, I, I I had an uncle who was a kingpin, and uh, he ended up giving me. Now people don't know this, but I don't drink, smoke, or do drugs no, to know, this day. Right, right. You know this. I know it, right? But he ended up giving me, you know, half a key. Okay. I set that half a key sat in my house for a month. Right. Because I had to wrestle with it. Oh, you got some new shoes for me and a shirt. I like that. You're looking good, brother. I like to watch. Yeah, 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 you know. So I had to decide, <laughs> man, if I was going to, you know, pimp right, it. Right, right. Something, you know. Right. If I was going to take that chance to make that money again. Because my thing was if I make the money this time, you know, I just open up four or five clubs. I don't, mm. you, know, I don't, you know, now that I know how to do it. Okay. But it okay. Okay. Didn't, didn't happen. I, do you think um, you're, you're misunderstood? Or you are who you are. You're exactly who you are. The people that look at you may be wrong. No, I, I just think that people understand what they want to understand. If anybody, if anybody actually talks to me, you, you, you'll, you'll understand. You'll be like, okay, okay these are good people. I'll walk, like I said, I'll walk a little old lady across the street. Sure. I don't have no problem with that. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the nicest guys. But I, you know, if you if you if you try to do something to me, I'm I'm going to try to do right, something to you. Right, right. You know, I've spoken with you. I've known you for years. Sometimes I do hate the fact some of the reputation you've have had. And I'm glad yeah. you're moving it gone. You know, better because it's right. like people like you just said. You perfectly said it, they don't know you. They just right. heard and they take a rumor, and that's the worst part. That rumor and then people just go on with it until yeah. they meet you and stuff. I've had people say things about me until they right. get to meet. Like, you know, I thought you was. I thought like, what the? Why right. do you think that? Because right. at times I stood up for my what I believed. Sure. I didn't get pimped or pushed around right. like nigga, I don't need this. And right. you know, but I also learned I had to learn how to deliver sure. that. And I, and I did too. And we yeah. talked about that. Yeah, we talked tone. so I, I don't have a problem with that. We talked about that. I've learned some stuff from you. Right. We've had personal conversations, you know, where uh, you know and you I thought backyard barbecue nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, well, well. If you, I, I'm yeah, gonna show you some pictures of one that I did about ten years ago, but okay, that's a different okay. story. All right, all right. It wasn't, it one. wasn't like this. But right. as far as you know, as far as how to get along and get around and whatever the case may be. Now, you do things the way that you do them. I'm still gonna do things the way that I do them. I, I just, I just honestly, I'm a pure comic. I, I get up on stage. I'm worth my money. 
and I don't really try to pimp anybody else and I don't need no big limos. I don't need all, I did, I did all of that stuff. Right. That means nothing. You know right. what, what means the most to me? Putting my kids in college, right. getting them in a better situation, buying another house and living with health and health insurance. There it is. Whole there different, is. whole different there dude. I appreciate that. Look, before I let you out, we got a thing called uh, yes. spin a wheel. We spin a wheel. Yes. And everybody does it on the damn show. We're gonna see what, how you. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you some little things about it for those who don't know. We do a thing called spin the wheel, and on this wheel it has Shit. stuff like stuff like trading places. Who would you trade a place with and why? We have a real secret. Think of a real secret that you might have had you never told nobody. You know what I'm saying? Mm. How you lost your virginity? You know, you know, when you're like nine, ten, something like that, probably. You know, you, you, you were in Virginia niggas, you know, probably, it was early, nigga, it was early when you lost yours, brother. Because um, I was in Virginia at times, so I know what time. Um, a celebrity crush call. This, this is your acting. We've been, this is when, if it lands on this, you've got to call a celebrity, a fake celebrity, put your phone, well, not fake celebrity, a fake call, and see who you could match. Damn, you got me house, off you know? on all this. I'm my, yeah. my, my mind thinking. It's like, all good. It's all good. So if it landed somebody. I ain't been able to answer pick, none of those no questions. No problem. Well, get something off your chest. Maybe the biggest lie you ever told. And that's probably about the size. That's probably about the size. See, that's of it. the thing that, that you you go home and you say, "Man, I should have said this." Yeah, this, well, this, this. It, it, it's you here know, now. I, it's here now. So, Teddy, give me. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna land on something. Give me a hard uh, DC DMV spin. Ready? No, you gonna spin this, bro? It's you. Can you cuss on this shit? Yeah, yeah. It's too late now. Yeah, y'all got. No, I know y'all got bleeps. Yeah, go ahead. I haven't hey, cussed yet, have I? Oh, yeah, that's I all good. <laughs> spin that thing. Uh oh, we're gonna land it. We're gonna land it. We're gonna land it. Give it a good drum roll. Drum roll. Drum roll. Drum roll. What is that? Get something off your chest. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, shit. so think about something that you want to get off get your chest. Off my chest. Just, it could be Lizzo and Aerie Spears. No, I'm fucking, I don't know what's on your chest, no. Whatever. It could be <laughs> Donald Trump. I don't know what the hell. Student loans. They can, they can you, you know what I want to get off my chest? Uh oh, here we go. Let's go see. Where can I get off my chest? You know what I want to get off my chest? I want to get off my chest that, and I'm making this up. There's more stuff in front of this, but this is the first okay. thing that popped in my head. All the internet comics that come from the internet, don't nobody give a fuck about hating y'all. Oh, wow. Don't nobody give a fuck about hating oh, y'all. Okay. Stop always walking around thinking somebody hates y'all. Listen, the bottom line is you, you went on the internet and people are following you because what people don't realize is you can do 45, 50, 70 takes and mm. it makes it look like one and people like what you do. I give you that love. But then when you step in the comedy arena, because you have to now make money off of right. it, you have given them the perception that you can do stand-up and you're funny. And when people in this game that still to this day, I got 37 years, that say, oh, that shit wasn't funny. Because if I do a show, Pierre's going to tell me, right. that shit wasn't funny. Mm -hmm. So when we say it to y'all, it's not that we hate y'all, it's that this shit wasn't funny. <laughs> So stop thinking everybody hates you. Oh, this whole thing today is the, 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 the word, you know, hate a raid and right, all that. Right. That was the worst thing that ever happened. Because now every y'all just hating. How are we just telling you the truth? Mm, that's real no, Off no, my real. chest. I said, it ain't hating, it's stating. I'm it's stating. stating. I'm just stating some facts. Now. That's all well, it I'm is. I'm saying my opinion and stuff. If you're good, we're going to yeah. give you that love. Right. If you're not, come on, work at it. I like that. I like that. Look, man, we give out a little, uh, we have a swag, man. We give out some gifts, man, to show some appreciation that you came through right. this piece, man. You Everything gonna, in here is black. You're going to give me a PS shirt? Huh? Yeah, you got Do we you got, got your picture on it? No, I got, no, I got my picture on it. Why you okay. hate? That's hating right there, nigga, okay? That's hating. I was hating on that okay. one. I ain't even going to lie. <laughs> That's hate right <laughs> there. Ain't gonna lie. Well, you get yeah, All right. Well, it's heavy too. All right, you got some stuff in there, man. It's heavy. Like, you and guys... black owned, since you like to be black owned. Yes. And support black businesses. Yes. 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 So listen, what, what we got in? Pull up some in there. That's what, one what of we shirt. got. Yep. Let's yep. see. That's... Let's see what we got here. And, that, and that's a good shirt too, that's bro. Good, good quality. You know, I, you know, I do. We do custom shirts. You I know. know yeah, I know. I forgot. Yeah, holler at him. He does. Yeah, we do. That's some dope ass. You do some dope sports shirts. This is a good brand too. I know. See, I don't put on no cheap. Yeah, this is a good brand. Only problem was that's a medium, and you ain't no medium. That's no, I ain't no medium, bro. Yeah. But you, you, you know gotta, what? You but you know what? Your girl, your little honey. No, my son just went away to college to play Man, basketball. Come on, there you go. Oh, no, and that's that. my prize and my, my, okay, my okay, possession, okay. my son. So there he you definitely, go. There he it definitely, is. A, a panic room shirt. And we will definitely, you'll definitely see him, and I appreciate that. I, no, I appreciate that for sure. That's a good quality too. Just so y'all know. I don't mess around. That's the first thing I look at. I heard that. Ain't no guilt. All right. All right. All right. All right, all right. What that, what that book this say? Your, this your book here? Yeah, what does it say? Read the top. I, my 100 uh -huh. homies and, and phonies in Ooh. Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood. Well, I know I ain't in the motherfucker, so I know. We might be a homie. You ain't no homie? Yeah, I'm a homie, but. Well, it, well, all right, then. Why but you, you did the same thing as everybody else. I ain't well, in this 
really? You're so yeah, I, I that already ain't know. Hey. Ain't all right, well, you I can mean, I'm just going to keep it 100. <laughs> I, ain't, I know I ain't in this uh, right. You know 100 niggas, and I ain't the first 100 niggas you know. Now, you, you, you 101, nigga. Yeah, yeah well, I take 101. 101. Right. And that's Let's my, see. a couple I say on the set. Put it in the comments. You know people talking. You tell them, put that in the comments. You know, yeah, hey, listen. I'm going to need y'all to put this in the comments, all right? There you go. There you go. Can you put my... Instagram what? in the comments at Teddy Carbon. No, you gonna say it in a second, yeah. I'm gonna be able to say it. Yeah, it was okay, like, well, they, they let me do that. I got you. Because I brother. need five thousand followers. I okay. got like seven followers. Damn, damn. damn. Yeah, okay. yeah, well, yeah, we, yeah. We'll get yeah, you about nineteen my... people in here. I, I take all nineteen. <laughs> I know that's right. I like that. I appreciate it. All right, cool. There you go. There you go. Let me see. Yeah, man. Some shows don't give y'all stuff, man. Okay. That's a trivia. Okay. That's a trivia card game. Okay. You're your comedy height. Yes, but it's trivia is about black comedy culture. Oh, for TV real? shows, movies, sitcoms, black comedians, okay. you know what I'm saying? So you, black comedians? You, all that, yeah. Oh, I know I ain't in it either. They ain't damn, never damn. Been. You gonna be the next volume. I ain't in none of this shit. You know, you, you know, a, you know, you know, you know, people, room. you know what, I'm gonna tell you something. You know what people <laughs> ask me? What? Why did I even start doing comedy? You know the simplest answer? What? I just want my name on the comedy club wall. So that's why you did it? I'm 37 years in. Right. I don't have my name on that one comedy club wall. Damn. Me either. Nah, We're gonna change that. You was on PS change room. Yo, thank you, Teddy, so yeah. much for coming hey, to the show. Hey man, thank brother. you I for really having me. You. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I appreciate that, that you know we've been trying to get yes, on here yes, for the yes, longest, yes, yes, man. Yes. And I, you, you know, here. comedy hype is is like that. They want an opinionated dude. Right. <laughs> Your next one. Your next one. You'll get some trouble. Yo, <laughs> I'll just chill. Shout out. There you go. Yo, thank you for watching this episode. I told you, man. I got my man, the legendary man. Uh, Mr. Teddy Carpenter came through. He spit some real facts, killed some stuff, man. He cleared the air about a lot of stuff that rumors yes. that were floating around that I yes. heard about, and I want him to speak up on. It. He spoke on. Um, so just check him out. Support the brother when you see him at your comedy club, or the local area where he's doing theater. Support that. And thank you for supporting PS Panic Room. Every week we bring dope ass guests. This week is no different. Man, hit the subscribe button or the notification bell right there. Pop right there. It is right there. Thank y'all and enjoy the show, man. And thank y'all for always supporting the show, man. We'll holler later, y'all. That. Oh, hold on. Before we leave, give a shout out to where you, uh, where they can reach you at. Right there. The camera right there. Uh, at Teddy Carpenter. Listen, yeah. listen. I'm going to tell you all real quick. We need to get this following up. Now, everything is about the internet now. So, you know, mm -hmm. I kind of bypassed it, but I got to get this thing up. So, at Teddy Carpenter, that's very, very important. Yeah. And for us, it makes us money on the road. Even if you you don't even like the comic, follow the comic. So, we get up 100,000. I saw you. You got about 100,000. We're getting there. We're getting there. You are doing the no, damn no, no, thing. No. Instagram over 100,000. 100, you know, and you know, light skin and dark skin people yeah, still man. like each other, bro. Okay. And I got a blue check, so I'm, a, I'm official, official. God, what your check at, boy? It's always, I don't have one. You get one from this show. I want to put money on no, I'm not putting no money on, but you get one from this show. Because <laughs> if I got 19 people coming from here, I might not get it. No, no, they're going to find out you legitimate now. Oh, you're my show. Okay. That's how we do. All right. Well, look, love you, Teddy, man. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Y'all. Thank y'all. And we'll talk. We'll see y'all next week. There it is. Boom. All right. Mm -mm. <laughs> Nah, okay. Bill Bellamy, my man, but let's keep it 100. He was Def Jam's dude. He was Def Jam's dude. When I did Def Jam, see, this is the part you missed, man. You missed the love. It was, when I did Def Jam, it wasn't it had nothing to do with the arrogance part. It had to do with I didn't want to do Def Jam. I never wanted to do Def Jam. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah goddammit. Uh, uh, yeah, put my camera on now. I never wanted. Right no, what, no, my camera. I'm oh, saying oh, my. Oh, oh, oh. I yeah. never wanted to do Def Jam, ever. The only reason I did Def Jam mm -hmm. was because I wanted an HBO special. Back then, that's how you got big time. Right, sure. Before Def Jam, you had to do these white clubs or this, that. Right. But HBO 30-minute specials sure. was the hot thing. Wasn't no Netflix or none of that stuff. Right. So when Def Jam was offered, I was like, I don't want to do that shit. Because I, I was like, I want to do an HBO special. Right. But I started thinking, and I was like, okay, well, they're going to do it on um HBO, HBO. Mm -hmm. so I will go talk to one of the producers do what I do and then maybe they'll move me and that's what I did right. and, it, and again this sounds arrogant I, I, I explain this yes. it's not arrogant when I went there I said listen I went to the production where I said I'm gonna I'm gonna get a standing ovation damn <laughs> and when I do I would like to talk to somebody about a half hour special a half hour special mm -hmm. And they thought it was a joke, but it had nothing to do with arrogance. It had to do with if you have that confidence in what you're going to do and you know what's going to happen, it was already preconceived in my head. I already, It was already mapped out. I knew 
exactly what was going to happen the first time I did it. So, so I wasn't saying it. It was again. I didn't have an OG. I didn't have an OG. Right, just do this, do that. I didn't have a manager that was like, "Hey, man, just do." You know, I'm gonna talk to. Him. I'm gonna talk to him. I'm. A, it was just me. Right. So they said, "Cool, come back and talk to us." That, that's how I knew they right. come back and talk to us. I went on stage, did what I did, got the stand ovation, came off stage, went back into the production room as the show was going on, and said, "So can we talk like later on after everything is?" And they 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 laughed. But I didn't know. Now you're cemented with Def Jam. They, you, you're definitely not going over mm. and doing a special now. So it was just a young guy, but somebody like just you. not knowing any better. Yeah, yeah it had right, nothing right. to do with. But I think you should have played the game because Bill Bellamy got a special from that. He did Def Jam. Some comics got specials from Def Jam. B- Bill Bellamy Def Jam. was signed with Def Jam. Just right. see, let's 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 talk this real. Shit. Bill Bellamy and a lot of those dudes were signed with Def Jam. Right. So Bill Bellamy was supposed to be the star outside of Martin, of Def Jam. But Bill Bellamy taped the same night I taped. Oh. You think them shows came on together? Hell no. Exactly. They separated them shows and tried to put Bill in his own thing. And and, and your man, um, um, uh, he was on your show. Um, DC Kerr? No. Uh, uh, Bruce Bruce? Uh, Hamburger. Home. Hamburger, okay. And yeah. all of them. He called me. He said, bro, do you understand that Bill Bellamy was the man in Jersey? Yeah, he was. And we watched you. We watched that Def Jam show because they were there live. Sure. I ain't knew nothing about no damn Bill Bellamy. But my thing, my plan wasn't to knock out anybody. Sure. My plan was to get a, half a 30, my, 30. Yeah. So whoever, like all these comics that was around, I, I didn't care nothing about. I, I knew all of them dudes. I heard about Bernie. I heard about Bernie. I knew about Bernie. I heard about Steve. I knew about all these dudes. But I, I, I my mind was not on any of them dudes. My mind was on how can I get a 30-minute special? And that was the only thing. It took me in other places, but I, if you ask me what I actually wanted, I wanted a 30-minute special to get an hour special. But after special. you didn't get the special the first time, why would you do it two more times? Well, that, because it, took, it, it made me money that I didn't see coming. Oh. Okay. You got to remember Def Jam hit. You, you, what's the movie? The 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 five heartbeats mm-hmm. or whatever, where they were sleep and all of them woke up. And was like, yo yo your song is on the radio. Right, sure. Your song is on the radio. That's how Def Jam hit, and everybody was excited. And then all of all of a sudden the tour started. Right. So immediately I went from doing a couple of comedy white comedy clubs to all of a sudden I got seventy thousand dollars on the books. Damn. And Jokers is sending me deposits. Damn. What? Why did I do it again? Why wouldn't I? So the 717, I couldn't even tell you what I did with the 717. I just knew, oh, I want a special, but y'all going to give me money for this? Damn. Oh, okay. Well, well, that's what and I'm, I, and that's, I'm and that's And that's the deal. So okay. I did it again. And I'm going to tell you why I did it again. Because I also knew Martin was leaving. And you want to be the host. You think not? Somebody's watching you. Think about think about every host that you can think of, from Gary Owens who did Comic View, who Comic View from uh, Samoa to what every host somebody watching you every night right. for X amount for a year, two years, hell yeah! But and I wanted to show I was the best dude because I I didn't have the lead. They had already had all these other comics signed, Bill Bellamy. Uh, 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 um, uh, God, Joe Torrey, all that. Right, Why right. you think Joe Torrey ended up the getting SBG it? or something? That's right. So, so they had it, talent. They had talent. So he he did it some uh, a while later. But they had all these dudes signed. So, so what do I do? I needed to be better than all these dudes. Right. So it had nothing to do with you know Ted is arrogant. I got to be better, clearly better than this dude, so you could possibly sign me, so I can come in behind Martin. All right. Well, there it is, man. Thank you again, Teddy Cobbner, for backstory. the backstory. There it is, for the backstory. And I got three more hours, goddammit. Hey, what's happening? I'm Ted Cobbner, and guess what? I've been lucky enough to come to Pierre's panic room, and I survived. Turn me up a little bit. Turn me up a little bit. If you like that show, like, subscribe, and comment below. You know, hit the, hit the notification bell.
subscribe button, man. We want you around. Appreciate it.